Can you believe it's taken this long for Mr. Freeze to return to Batman the Animated Series? But boy, did he pick a great episode to come back for. We're talking about Deep Freeze right now. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the show. So glad that you could join us once again. And if you're new here, thank you so much for joining us. Because if you're like me and grew up on Batman the Animated Series, became a huge Batman fan today, then this is the place for you. Because here we're talking about each and every episode of Batman the Animated Series. So I hope you'll stick around, hit subscribe, because I have a lot of great content coming your way. And today we're talking about Deep Freeze, which originally aired on November 26th, 1994. You know, I really hadn't thought about it much until I sat down to watch this episode that we have not seen Mr. Freeze since the beginning of the first season. And here we are, the last episode of the third season, and we finally get to see him come back. But in typical Bruce Tim fashion, they really hit a home run with his first debut episode, Heart of Ice. So it's my opinion that they were careful about when to bring him back to the series. Because this story is also a really solid episode for Mr. Freeze. But you'll have to stick around till the end to see where I rank this episode in my list of favorite episodes and how it stacks up against Heart of Ice. But we'll get into all that right after our 60 second rundown of the episode. Here we go. A robot is breaking Mr. Freeze out of prison and Batman and Robin deduce that this has got to be someone breaking Mr. Freeze out and Mr. Freeze isn't behind this. So they go to talk to their resident uh, uh, robot expert, or the uh, the former owner of the Hard Act computers, and he looks at the design of this robot and goes, yeah, I helped design that for another guy, Grant Walker, uh, who's building this World of t Tomorrow type theme land, so you might want to go check him out. And so then we uh, uh, see Grant Walker, where he is the one behind this, that has taken Mr. Freeze from prison and, and wants to offer him uh, Nora in exchange for uh, him giving him his immortality. Now that he's frozen, Mr. Freeze is frozen, he he ages really slowly. So Grant Walker wants that because he's also an old man. Batman and Robin arrive on the scene and there is this world of tomorrow where everything seems to be going really well and everything's very up and very good. But yet they, the Grant Walker's on a big screen telling everybody that, oh, and what we're going to do is we're going to live in this harmony of this great little uh, bubble of our own because out in the real world, we're going to freeze everybody and, and destroy the rest of the world and we'll live in here and I'll live in forever. And so uh, he, he uh, Mr. Freeze gives him his uh, his chiro cryogenics freezing elements, and he is now immortal. Uh, and uh, Batman and Robin come in there, and they get frozen by Mr. Freeze, but then they appeal to his good nature and says, listen, you can't do this. This isn't right. Nor is going to be mad at you because you've now destroyed the rest of the world. So Mr. Freeze helps them get out. Grant uh, and, and and freezes the, the everybody in the tunnel, and Grant gets out and goes... Um, <clears throat> on a rampage and, and and they sink the whole island batman and robin get out and then uh they lock him up uh and oh and mr freeze is in this little cocoon with his wife nora Ooh, i was moving i was cooking there impressive impressive you gaze upon all this and can only say impressive. This is really a different type of episode than what we've seen with Batman the Animated Series in the past. And I like that. It's a very refreshing type of story. Fact of the matter is it's not too nice out there anymore. I think I've talked about this before, but I'm typically not a big fan of these kind of I'm going to destroy the world kind of plots and then these two superheroes, Batman and Robin, have to stop that and 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 save the world kind of storylines. But this one strangely finds this right balance where we have this guy, Grant Walker, who, by the way, looks like a really evil Walt Disney. Grant Walker at your service, sir. His motivation is that the world is going horribly wrong. Crime, hatred, violence, things keep going on like that. It could mean the end of civilization. That's why I decided to build a city where good folks can live in peace. And so he has created this utopian kind of world uh, that he has selected these people to come live there. I don't know where they came from. And he has robots doing service work, so it's kind of got this World of Tomorrow kind of feel to it. Again, another Walt Disney reference. I mean, he's got the little pencil mustache. 
You can't tell me he's not based on Walt Disney. Excuse me, but I fail to see the problem with that. So, yes, he's going to destroy the whole world, but the way that they kind of contain this story inside of this little bubble, I guess it is, makes it more obtainable and not like some of the, the plots like we talked about in Avatar, I think, where... Uh, with Ra's al Ghul where he's trying to destroy the whole planet, you know, and, and it's up to Batman to shut down this machine that's going to destroy the planet. This is a little different. This is more of a one-on-one -on -one conflict. And yes, the threat is very real that the planet is going to be destroyed, but at the same time, the battle seems very personable. The way that they uh, appeal to Mr. Freeze to make the right choice and help them makes it more of an obtainable story or a graspable story, I guess. You think you're alone now? Wait until she learns the truth. I said silence! And it's got a lot of other great things going for it, is that I, I love the motif of this kind of World of Tomorrow setting with the robots. As you know, I, I was a big fan of the Hard Act episodes. They kind of tie that back into the story, fold it back in there. Uh, is a neat nod, and so it's got these kind of sci-fi elements mixed in with the film noir. Constructing and programming the animatronic figures he used in his park attractions. When they go to visit him to talk with him about these robots, they had some other great references. Now he's making toys, and we have who they don't call by name, but obviously look, is, a, uh, is a take on the Batmite character. Greetings, Dynamic Duo! Sort of glad they didn't go down the route of actually doing a Batmite storyline in the animated series. Poor little critter. I never could get his programming right. But then also, when they do kind of a pan of the room, you can see a a, a toy of Mitzelfuck. Again, another reference to, to Superman. I could only assume that they're starting to think about what they're going to do next for Batman the Animated Series or, or in the DC animated world and maybe already starting to talk about Mitzel Flick and Superman and kind of tying those worlds together. So those are neat little references. Well, if it isn't old M9. I would have to say probably the biggest negative to this is it's almost too big of a story for one episode. It feels like they cover a lot of ground in a, in a good way, but they kind of hint to a lot of other neat elements that I wish that they would have had time to expound on. As a standalone episode, it leaves some unanswered questions. Where did this Grant Walker guy come from? Who are these people that are staying in this dome? How did he get this ability to, to freeze the planet? And, and why does Mr. Freeze just go along with this and not just shoot him with his gun and take Nora for himself? Like, what? What's his investment into this plot? Because I think the setup of this this plot, this idea, is really fascinating, really entertaining, and I just would have liked to see more of it. Brother, he's all hard, isn't he? Walker's a madman. We talked about it before, but Michael and Sarah's depiction of Mr. Freeze is just incredible. The softness to his character, but also the the uh, intimidating factor and the menacing elements of of this character is uh, just spot on. Old and infirm as you are, I'd trade a thousand of my frozen years for your worst day. So it's hard to say that he's the villain in this. He's he's almost a a secondary character, but I always think of this episode as another Mr. Freeze episode. But in reality, it's really Batman and Robin versus Grant Walker. Once Project Deep Freeze is completed, you won't need the suit. Well, let's get that started. And we really get to see the heart of Mr. Freeze illustrated at the end where he just wants Batman and Robin to leave to save themselves. They're trying to get Mr. Freeze to, to go with them and, and forget about Nora. She's long gone at this point. And yes, he freezes Robin, but he does that to get Batman out of there. Take the boy and go. So when it comes time to rank this episode, yeah, it's really, really a great episode. And... It was great fun to see Mr. Freeze come back. Uh, it was a very deliberate story for Mr. Freeze to be tied into. But like I said, at the same time, it almost felt like they were trying to cram too much into this episode. So for those reasons, it, it comes just shy of the top 10 list in my number 14 spot of my favorite episodes so far. It falls just below Trial, I think because Trial really kind of opens up this, this bigger element to Batman of 
which came first, Batman or the villains. And that kind of peek into Batman psychology is really kind of fascinating in that episode. But it does beat out Christmas with the Joker because as much as that is a, a great, fun episode and, and really depicts Joker the best way possible, I think Mr. Freeze ends up being a more interesting villain. All that matters is I once again have my wife and the means to restore her. So do you think that this episode is too big to fit into a half hour episode? Are there elements of this story that you agree that um, weren't quite answered or fleshed out in the course of the episode? Or do you think that it fits nicely into a 22 minute slot? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more of these, then just hit subscribe because we have new episodes coming out every Tuesday and Thursday. And this Thursday, we have the first episode of the fourth season already with the terrible trio. So you don't want to miss that. As always, I'm Andy Cano. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.